to take a moment out and start by praying for all the moms. Father God, I lift every mom up to you that's watching this right now. And I pray for joy. I pray for peace. I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I thank you, Father God, for comforting every mom, healing every mom's heart that's been wounded. And Father, I also pray for children, even ones that are grown up that have been hurt by their moms. And I pray for healing. I thank you, Father, for healing schisms of division in families. And I thank you, Father, for bringing mothers back to their sons and daughters and healing any relationship. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Happy Mother's Day. Well, this is a different one, I'll have to tell you. Um, not having you all here to love on you face to face. I'm still thanking God that we can live stream and, and get a chance to connect and still minister to you. Um, it's not the way we would like it at this time, but life is full of different challenges that we don't like. <laughs> but we can find that when we trust God, he can make a multitude of blessings out of anything we are going through. So be encouraged. Don't be discouraged. I know it's almost like a, a heavy fog. I can feel it at times. And you just got to press through it. You got to just praise your way through it. I encourage you, the moment we start praise and worship, to put it on. Um, sometimes when I have it going and I'm at home, I will just dance around my office like I am a ballerina, hip-hop artist. I mean, you should see me dance for real. I just might do it when you come back here because I'm going to be so excited. But we just got to praise our way through it, worship our way trust God, knowing that none of this is taking him by surprise. You know, I was talking with my husband, and we were just talking about different situations in the Bible where people were quarantined. And uh, one of the ones we talked about with Jonah, he got stuck in that whale's belly for three days. I mean, that, that's pretty bad. At least we get to be at home, and hopefully you got a comfortable bed and a good pillow. So we just got to thank God in the midst of everything. Start your day every day you wake up. Thank him. Thank him that you have air to breathe. Thank him that you're alive. Thank you that, you're, that your future is bright. And I just want to declare that to you. God has a bright future for you. I want to encourage you to keep pressing forward to the mark of your high calling in Christ Jesus. This storm will pass. I mean, it's a long storm. We thought it was going to be a two-week storm, and it's longer than we thought, but it will pass. And I promise you there's better days ahead. Um, one of the things that we all have in common is every one of us has a mom. And some of you out there, you've had great moms. Some of you are heartbroken because your mom's in heaven and you're missing her. Some of you did not have great moms. Uh, some of you, your moms abandoned you when you were born and you never met your mom. So I know there's Mother's Day can bring all kinds of emotions out. Uh, but I want to talk to you today about the essentials of motherhood. And even though you may not even have a mom, um, you have a spiritual mom. I'm your spiritual mom if you want me to be. And you may have other spiritual moms out there. But uh, to, to all the women, I want to talk a little bit about the essentials of motherhood. And then I'm also going to have this message apply to every guy too. There's some nuggets in here, so I don't want to just tailor it for moms. It's for everybody. Uh, the first scripture I want to read that applies to every single one of us is Psalms 139, verse 13 and 14. It says, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. So this is a good one for every person, whether you're 
mom planned you or didn't plan you, God planned you. God has a plan for you. And I love this. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If nobody has told you today, let me be the first one to tell you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to hear good news. I want to share this with you too. This is some more good news. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Now that's a timely word for some people because some people have lost hope. Some people are fighting depression and discouragement. But I want to remind you that the Lord says his thoughts towards you are of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So be encouraged today. Stay full of hope. Hope will turn into faith, and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I thank God that you are listening to this message this morning and having your faith built. So the essentials of motherhood. I'm going to try to get three of them out and I may kind of throw them all together, but one of the essentials of motherhood is love. We know that love never fails. If you have love, you're very rich. Everybody needs love. There's not anybody that doesn't need love. We really need to be loved. And people want to be loved, and God is love, and perfect love casts out all fear. So if you're battling fear right now, I just pray for the love of God to fill your heart, your mind, your emotions. I speak to that fear, and I command it to go, and I pray and I declare that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, 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 and a sound mind. You're not going crazy. The world's crazy, not you. The world's gone nuts. You're the, you're the sane one. You're the one with the mind of Christ. Don't let the news throw you. Don't let people wearing masks throw you. <laughs> you know, it's just um, kind of strange that when we go to the bank, we're wearing masks, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, we just got to count it all joy. Count it joy. Okay. <sighs> Love, the three essentials of faith. Love, encouragement, everybody needs to be encouraged. People go do a lot more if they're encouraged. They go further if they're encouraged. And then everybody needs somebody to believe in them. And I'm kind of going to tie all three points into this message. Um, I know that you need love. I know that you need encouragement. And I know that you need somebody to believe in you. And... Pastor and I believe in you. I, I, I heard this somewhere that, you know, we've always said we got the greatest church on the planet. We got the greatest people. And, and I heard, you know, on Facebook, somebody ministering about pastors saying that all pastors believe that they have the greatest people on the planet. And I thought, they do? <laughs> I thought it was just Pastor and I and a few others that thought that. But we really do love you. Um, we miss you so much. We miss seeing your face. It's just really exciting, just like even having, seeing Hannah and Tania, people that we haven't seen. Um, when a new camera person comes, it's like, oh, hi, there's somebody new. We get very excited to see somebody in the church. And we're believing it's not going to be that much longer. You know, it, we're, we're encouraged to see that some progressive steps are happening to open up. Um, but, you know, I think of just my mom, one of the greatest encouragers. I mean, my mom would tell me, Desiree, you're the best woman preacher I've ever heard. And, you know, of course, that's my mom. That's what she thinks. And she'd tell my husband, you're, you're the greatest singer. You're the greatest songwriter. Your music is going to go all over the world. And... Then I remember when we did the church channel and through live streaming, everything's changed. 
We have people watching us from all over the world. His music did go all over the world, and I believe it will continue to go all over the world. But it's so nice to have a mom that believes in you. And I can remember, you know, with my son that I adopted. We adopted him when he was five years old. And there are definitely many challenges. He'd been through a lot of abuse at a young age, and he had a lot of anger. And, and he took it out by breaking things and starting fires and just all kinds of stuff. And um, I would tell Josh, I would say to him, you know, when things were peaceful and, and once we got the fire put out or whatever was going on, I'd, I'd look at him and I'd say, Josh, you're going to do great things for God one day. And when I would say that, he would look at me very peacefully and say, thank you, Mom. You know, he was just so happy to have somebody believe in him. And, you know, we can look back now. You know, some of the things that happened seemed so traumatic at the time. I can remember one time being invited to go speak at Dr. Betty Price's church. And to me, this was a big deal because she was a mentor. One of the first churches that I went to was Dr. Fred and Betty Price's. My husband took me there on our second date, and I ended up getting filled with the Holy Spirit there. So just had such admiration for her. And the fact that I was getting to speak at a women's event she was doing, I mean, I was just like riding high at this time. I remember leaving my husband and son together. It looked like they were watching TV. And then when I come home, they're still sitting there watching TV. And I thought, oh, this is, this is really awesome. You know, it looks like they had a great day. And then I go into my bathroom, and it's white kind of a, like a marble stone that is covered with tons of black shoe polish everywhere on the mirror, on the bathtub, and, you know, things thrown everywhere. And I'm like, Josh, you know, what is going on here? And he said, well, you know, I, I took peroxide and, and fire and, and shoe polish, and this is what happened. And it was just like, you know, I, I went from being so high in the Holy Ghost to so mad in the flesh. But, you know, as days went on, I would still tell him, Josh, one day you're going to grow up and you're going to do great things for God. And I think no matter how mad we get at people, we got to encourage them. We got to speak life over one another. Moms, you got to encourage your kids. You got to prophesy to who you are, not, <laughs> not totally freak out by what you see, because what you see is subject to change. And that's the life of faith. And, you know, I'm very proud of my son and his wife, Alexis. They've been married three years, and I, I'm just so proud of them. You know, what they're doing, we're very excited. They're coming out here this summer, and we believe that the beaches will be open and we'll get to go and enjoy time. But, but we all need encouragement. Husbands and wives encourage one another. Friends encourage people. It's... Um, it lets you know you believe in them, and you are destined for greatness. If nobody's told you today, um, God has a marvelous plan. Let me go ahead and share this scripture. You can go ahead and turn to it. I know that some people are going through what I call a very difficult time, and I believe that this scripture is going to so encourage you. It's 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. I'm going to read it from the message. It says, friends, when life gets really difficult, see what I mean? Is this scripture for you or what? It's like talking to the situation. Here we go. Let me start over. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. What a powerful scripture for us 
at this day and at this time, when everything seems so crazy and difficult, God is saying, be glad, rejoice. You're in the very thick, and a spiritual refining process is going on all around us, all over our nation, in fact, all over the world. And God says glory is just around the corner. I just pray and I prophesy and I declare that glory is around the corner for you. I just want you to say that with me. Say glory is just around the corner for me. I am glad, <laughs> I'm counting it joy, that I'm in the very thick of it, in Jesus' name. You know, I know life can be hard, but you are born again for hard. Don't allow a setback to be bigger than your comeback. You may have taken a couple steps backwards, but get ready to run forward. Press forward to the mark of your high calling in Christ Jesus. God created you on purpose with a purpose. And he has a plan and a destiny that's mapped out. He knows every day, every hour of your life, every hair on your head is numbered. He knows everything about you. And that plan is deep, deep on the inside of you. And sometimes to fully understand or fully know that plan, you just have to be still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. You gotta quiet your mind. You gotta quiet everything around you to hear God. It's pretty quiet in this church. <laughs> it's kind of easy to hear because <laughs> I'm not hearing a lot of amens. That's good preaching, Pastor. I think I'm going to need you to write that because I'll look at it later on in the day. I'll go through all the comments. So say, Pastor, we're here. I'm listening. I'm going to press into God. I hear you. <laughs> um, and then hit share. You just go ahead and share and be a blessing to other people that you think may need to hear this message and be encouraged this Mother's Day. You know, when the world goes cray cray, you gotta pray pray. We gotta just press into God and pray more. Be still, know that he's God and pray. God's equipped you for such a time as this. You know, he calls us the army of God. <laughs> he doesn't call us the sit back, chill church. He calls us an army. We've been equipped on how to fight and how to win. You're not going to lose. You're not going to end up on the streets. You're, you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You're going to get through this. I, I want to close with some I got a long close because I got some time here. <laughs> I got 10 minutes. So, but I want to close this last section and just give you some spiritual mom wisdom nuggets that I believe will be a blessing to your life. And the first one is our God is big enough to see you through when others say you're through. I don't care what anybody has said about you, told you. If it does not line up with the word of God and good news and graciousness and an awesome plan, it is not the truth. And you got to know God's going to see you through. God is bigger. God's word is more powerful than any negative word that's ever been spoken over your life. So you got to cast down those vain imaginations. What's a vain imagination? Somebody may, may have said something hurtful to you, but you're repeating it in your mind. That's a vain imagination. You got to cast it down. And then you got to choose to think on the things that are true and just and lovely and a good report. Every vain imagination that exalts itself above the word of God. 
The word of God is powerful. It's full of life. It's full of purpose. It's full of plans. It's a light. It will lead you. It will guide you in the darkness. Don't neglect your word time. There's so many distractions. You got to get up and decide, first thing in the morning, I'm going to spend time in my Bible, listening to God before my mind gets too busy, thinking of my to-do list or maybe my not-to-do list or all the things I got to get done today or I got nothing to get done today. Well, you do have a job. It's a very important job. You're called to populate heaven and plunder hell. So don't lose sight of that. Um, his plan is beyond what you are asking for. Dare to ask God. <sighs> I got a couple scriptures here that are going to bless you. The first one is Ephesians 3.20. It says, Now glory be to God by his mighty power at work within us. He is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, and hopes. Go big, dream big, dare to ask God for what you want. Psalms 2 verse 8 in the NIV says, Ask of me and I will give you the nations, your inheritance, the ends of the earth, your possessions, you see, God wants to do far more for you than you're even asking. So get out of the doldrum and start asking God for big things in this time. God needs you. He needs his kids to be a bright light. There is a war going on, and we got to wake up to it. Both pastor and I have been very involved in just educating ourselves in the legal system and what we can do and what we can't do and talking to Christian attorneys and, and learning and, and studying government to a higher level than we've ever studied it before to know who owns the power, who has the right to make these decisions. We want to know. And so, and I'm sure that you're doing the same thing. And I encourage you, I encourage you to write your mayor, to write your governor, to tell them that you believe the church is essential and that they should claim it. You know, the more people that write in, they do listen. But we got to have a voice. And for too long, the church has not had a voice. That's why we have millions and millions of abortions is because the church is just laid back. And we got to make a stand. We got to rise up. We have to know our rights. I mean, just some of the education I've done, finding out what's happening in the school systems. I mean, some of these Christians' attorneys have been saying the best thing that's happened is that your kids are not in the public school system right now because they're not being indoctrinated with non-Bible truths, the fact that they're at home with you in a Christian home. This is why we got to count it all joy. This is why we got to remember God's going to make a multitude of blessings out of this. This you got to remember you're the best teacher possible for your child. You love them more than anybody. So, so don't be discouraged, you know. I, I remember a couple times where I had to homeschool Josh, and it was very difficult. I couldn't understand his second and third grade math. I could not figure out some of the stuff they were teaching. I thought I was going to teach him how to add and multiply and division and easy stuff. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to get you a tutor. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a kid that's a couple years older than you and pay him to teach you know to tutor you in this I'm going to be your PE teacher and today we're going to go get some wave runners and we're going to the ocean and next week we're, we'll go up to the mountains and we'll go skiing you know I, I was a pretty fun mom and I also taught them Bible because I love Bible so moms Taylor make this to yourselves dads Taylor make this time have some fun be their art teacher whatever it is you like to do do that with them okay I don't even know where that came from that's not even in my notes but that's a word for somebody 
in my few minutes that I have left, I really encourage you to find friends who align with your God destiny and lose friends who alienate you from your God destiny. Oh, man, who you hang with is so important. Choose wisely your friends. Don't let anyone else's opinion of you keep you from remembering God's opinion of you. That is what matters. There is never a wrong time to do the right thing, and there is never a right time to do the wrong thing. Again, it's God's opinion of you that matters, and he thinks you are to die for. How awesome is that? You know, I was looking the other day, a couple days ago, at the death toll of COVID-19 worldwide. It was about 270,000 worldwide, and I'm sure it's increased because that was a couple days ago. And then I thought that's a lot of people that needed to know. I, I pray that every one of them knew Christ. And then I looked at the daily death toll worldwide. It's 150,000 people every day, not a COVID-19. This is just death, whether it's suicide, whether it's a car accident, heart disease, all the various ways that people die. 150,000 people daily. I mean, if I could leave you with any wisdom whatsoever as a spiritual mom or or a voice that speaks into your life, you got to stay heavenly minded. You got to remember this earth is passing away. As sad as it is when somebody dies, it's so sad for those that are close to them. But the reality is we're all out of here. Every one of us, you know, this, this body is going to die. And it never feels like it. So we have to stay eternal minded. Pastor and I went the other day to the bank to make a deposit. And right next to our bank, they are selling weed. And it's open. And you know, on the inside, I'm like, I can't believe that this pot store is open and declared essential along with the liquor store and the church is declared non-essential. How cuckoo crazy is this? And so I thought, I'm just going to get my little Instagram. I did it a few days ago and I took it out and I'm just saying, oh, you know, look what's happening. This is, this is open, but our church is closed. Now the security guard in front of it that's working for them, he goes, and he, he was on my Instagram, he says, he goes, yeah, this is crazy. And I said, yes, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, I mean, even him, you know, this is a wild time. But now the good news is when we were in the bank, um, we had a meeting and she was busy. And so the manager took us. And then after we finished our banking business, he said, do you have any other questions? And I said, well, yeah, I do have one other question. I'm telling you this story because I'm hoping you imitate me as I imitate God. But I said, yes, I do have one more question. I said, where are you going to go when you die? And he looked at me like, you know, I don't know. And so I just shared with him a little bit about Jesus and, and asked him if he, if he wanted to spend eternity in heaven and talk to him. And he was interested. I said, can I pray for you now? We can pray right now. You can receive Christ. And right then he prayed. And so I want to encourage you, church, because I know it's mainly the church watching. Look for those opportunities. They're few and far between right now, but they are there. Whether you go to the bank and it's a teller, whether it's a grocery person, store person checking you out, you got a moment to just ask, can I pray for you? Um, especially, this is the other thing, when telemarketers call, <laughs> rather than hang up, ask them, turn it. They're trying to sell you something. You got something better to sell them. Outsell them. You can do it. Greater is Christ in you than he that's in the world. So I so encourage you to look for these God opportunities when people call, when businesses are calling, trying to sell you something. They're there. You just got to you gotta pray in the Holy Ghost every day. Because as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, 
you'll be more sensitive. And so I, I, I do want to pray for you. I've got a few things I'm going to pray as we're just winding up here. I want to pray. I just want you to lift a hand to heaven. Father, I, I pray right now for boldness for our church. Boldness to be a witness. The more you witness, the more strength you'll have. The more joy you'll have. The more favor you'll have. The more you'll see things from God's perspective. So, Father, I thank you for that Holy Ghost boldness. Oh, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in other tongues. You may be watching this for the first time. You may have had somebody share this or somebody send it to your Facebook page or ask you to watch this or email it to you. And I'm going to ask you the question I asked the bank teller. Do you know where you're going to go when you die? You need to know. You get to make that decision here on earth. Let me tell you why you get to make that decision. When God made you, he made you just like him. The Bible says he created you in his image and likeness. And being created in his image and likeness, he gave you a free will. That's why he doesn't make you be good. That's why there's so much craziness in this world. We all have a free will. There's a bad devil, and he influences people, and people like to serve him. You're either serving God or you're serving the devil. Make a decision today to serve God, to spend eternity in heaven. Jesus came, he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead. And he wants to go, he says, I go to, he to heaven to prepare a place for you. For who? For those that have made him Lord. If you've never made Jesus Christ Lord, I want you right now just to pray this simple prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me for every sin that I've done. I forgive those that have hurt me. I let it go. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and every gift that you have. I declare that the rest of my life is going to be the best of my life. In Jesus name if you pray that for the first time we want to hear from you you can call us at the church 818-313-9393 you can leave a message for Gladys she'll give me the message or you can go ahead and and text that number that they're showing and let us know we'll get back to you we'd love to send you a free Bible just be a blessing to you I, I want to pray for the Christians that you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost. You've never prayed in other tongues. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's one of the most persecuted gifts, the most misunderstood gifts. Yet Paul says, I thank my God that I pray more than y'all. I mean, he prayed in tongues more than anyone. Jude 120 says you build yourself up on your most holy faith. It's a strength. I, I often wonder why is it that only three to five percent have anything to do with the Great Commission? Well, it's probably only three to five percent of Christians that pray in the Holy Ghost. And so if you want to be one of those, just Jesus is your Lord, just, just pray this. Just say, Father, Fill me with your Holy Spirit, including the gift of speaking in other tongues. Now you have it because you asked for it. All you got to do is release it. And I'm just going to pray in tongues for a couple of seconds here just to pray with you. On three, let's just do it. One, two, three. Shonamiyakaha salabiyakehe solabiyakaha se. Now you just gotta let whatever sounds in here come out. 
And it's, it's an awesome gift. If you want more information about it, text that number, call us. We'll send you a pamphlet. We'll send you all kinds of scriptures. We're here to equip you. We want to see you succeed in life. We want to see you fulfill every dream, every God purpose. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. I think I got it all. Can you do me a favor? If this message was a blessing to you, can you share it? Um, the other thing I just want to say from my heart to In His Presence Church people, I know a lot of you just watch it. It's live stream, so you watch it whenever. I would so appreciate it, and so would Pastor. If you would watch it when we're watching it, you know, when the service is happening, there's, it gives us a feel of coming together. It gives us something where we can all see one another at the same time, and that would just mean the world to us. And then to, to all of our partners, if you want to later host a watch party, and invite other people. It's another way that you can, it's like inviting people to church is the closest thing we have. We'll have more news later on when the church is opening and we've gone back and forth with the idea of, of whether or not to have you all come and just sit in your cars. I don't know, we may do that. Let us know if that's something that you think would be fun. <laughs> um, you know, at least you can honk at each other and drive around. I don't know. This is just so wild and crazy. But we're just praying daily and asking God for wisdom. And, and again, we're thanking God that um, I encourage you to pray with me. I pray for L.A. because I just keep praying that L.A. opens and that California opens and that this disease disappears completely in Jesus' name. I know you're agreeing with me. I love you. I love you. I love you.